Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Thank you to everyone who has chosen to support the work I do here on Patreon. Your monetary support really does help to balance out the uncertainty of YouTube ad revenue. So thank you to each and every one of you. To kick things off today, we get a new note from Morgan Stanley on the valuation of SpaceX. Back in July, they put a value of $52 billion on the company. But since then, SpaceX has continued to win new government contracts and they continually deploy more Starlink satellites. And thanks to this continuous growth, Morgan Stanley has upped their valuation to $100 billion. They also have a bull case valuation of $200 billion. In their note, Morgan Stanley describes SpaceX as mission control for the emerging space economy. The pieces are coming together for SpaceX to create an economic and technology flywheel. Starlink was actually the main reason for the increased valuation. Morgan Stanley valued Starlink to be about $42 billion on its own previously, but in their revised estimate, they raised the figure to $81 billion. This was based on Morgan Stanley's adjusted estimate of Starlink's potential subscriber base going from 235 million users all the way up to 364 million globally. Now, to reach these numbers, Morgan Stanley estimated that SpaceX would have to spend about $240 billion to build out the global satellite network. However, Chad Anderson, managing partner of Space Capital and the CEO of Space Angels, said that SpaceX could see future revenues from Starlink in the range of 30 to $50 billion per year. This means that even a conservative valuation multiple would actually put Starlink at roughly $90 billion on its own. And this, of course, does not even count the potential of SpaceX's deep space projects like the Starship missions to Mars. Now, unfortunately, SpaceX is still a private company, However, Galley over at HyperChange I know was working on a type of venture capital fund for retail investors, so reach out to him if you have an interest in investing in SpaceX. Hopefully one day down the road they go public, but only time will tell. Next up, Tesla did release their 10Q for quarter three and we get some very big investment news. So let's jump right into the report. Tesla said, we are simultaneously ramping new products in Model Y and Solar Roof constructing manufacturing facilities on three continents and piloting the development and manufacture of new battery cell technologies. And the pace of our capital spend may vary depending on overall priority among the projects, the pace at which we meet milestones, production adjustments to and among our various products, increased capital efficiencies, and the addition of new products. Owing and subject to the foregoing, as well as the pipeline of announced projects under development and all other continuing infrastructure growth, we currently expect our capital expenditures to be at the high end of our range of 2.5 to 3.5 billion in 2020 and increase to 4.5 to 6 billion in each of the next two fiscal years. They continue, notwithstanding the capital intensive projects that are in progress or planned, our business is now consistently generating cash flow from operations in excess of our level of capital spend. And in the third quarter of 2020, we also reduced the use of our working capital credit facilities. We expect our ability to be self-funding to continue as long as macroeconomic factors support current trends in our sales, combined with better working capital management resulting in shorter days sales outstanding than days payable outstanding, our sales growth is also facilitating positive cash generation. We also opportunistically strengthened our liquidity through an at-the-market offering of common stock in September 2020 with net proceeds to us of approximately $4.97 billion. Basically, Tesla has money to spend and they are going to. They will essentially be doubling their capital expenditures for fiscal years 2021 and 2022. I think a crucial thing to keep in mind here is the effectiveness to which Tesla spends money. If you missed the Q3 call, Elon went on a mini tangent about how hard it is not to waste money when it comes to capital expenditures, so a lot of their effort really boils down to spending money as wisely and efficiently as possible so as to maximize the return on investment. I do think some people wouldn't think twice about this increase in capital expenditure as you see other companies like Volkswagen and GM talking about 10, 20, 30 billion dollar investments 
But the real question is how efficiently can you spend that? At this stage, I would guess and venture to say that Tesla's CapEx spend is about 90 to 95% efficient, whereas GM and Volkswagen and others would actually be doing well to hit about 30% efficiencies in the capital deployment, given the uncertainty of what their customers will want when it comes to the EV space. Compare this with Tesla right now, and they have a super clear vision of what their customers want, what they expect, Expect and what they plan to do moving forward. Tesla also added, we expect that the cash we generate from our core operations will generally be sufficient to cover our future capital expenditures and to pay down our near-term debt obligations, although we may choose to seek alternative financing sources. They then later said, we expect that our current sources of liquidity, together with our projection of cash flows from operating activities, will provide us with adequate liquidity over at least the next 12 months, even considering the anticipated increase in capital expenditures in the next two fiscal years. A large portion of our future expenditures is to fund our growth and we can adjust our capital and operating expenditures by operating segment, including future expansion of our product offerings, retail and service locations, body shops, mobile service fleet, and supercharger network. For example, if our near-term manufacturing operations decrease in scale or ramp more slowly than expected, including due to global economic conditions and levels of consumer outlook and spend impact impacting demand in the worldwide transportation, automotive, and energy product industries, the pace of our capex may be correspondingly slowed. We may need to or want to raise additional funds in the future, and these funds may not be available to us when we need or want them or at all. If we cannot raise additional funds when we need or want them, our operations and prospects could be negatively affected. And just FYI, money spent on capital expenditure purchases are not immediately reported on an income statement, thus they do not affect net income. Income. Rather, it's treated as an asset on the balance sheet and it's typically deducted over the course of a few years as a depreciation expense starting in the year following the date on which the item was purchased. A quick note from Reddit user Zaskar, Tesla is the third top brand in Dubai. Now, these numbers are, of course, very small in the grand scheme of things, as the total number of new cars registered in Dubai for September of this year is only 2,494. But you need to keep in mind, this is a place where petrol is very cheap, the charging infrastructure is not good, and electric cars are very much still in their infancy. So with a lot to be desired for the supporting electric vehicle environment, Tesla still manages to be in the number three spot for all cars sold. Next up, we get a report from CNBC that Tesla will be shipping 7,000 made in China cars to Europe on Tuesday. This shipment of 7,000 Model 3s made in Shanghai will arrive in Belgium toward the end of next month with these planned deliveries going to places like Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, Switzerland, and Sweden. Now, I do think the most likely reason for this decision to export is to fulfill European demand that was not able to be fulfilled from the the typical Fremont shipments due to the factory being shut down earlier this year. There are however many intricacies like import and export regulations, tariffs, sales taxes, and other considerations like that, so we won't know for sure without hearing directly from Tesla, but it is reasonable to assume that shipping from Shanghai to Europe is more cost effective than from Fremont to Europe, so I'm sure Tesla is capitalizing on having increased capacity available at Shanghai. Next up, Reddit user South Congresser shared this useful chart with the supercharging rates around the world. As you can see, the United States comes in at roughly 28 cents per kilowatt, but you need to keep in mind these are supercharging rates and most people are charging at home for under 10 cents per kilowatt, if you happen to reside in any one of these countries, I would love to hear from you if your supercharging rate experiences have been similar to what you see on this chart, but I thought this was an interesting breakdown. Another quick and funny note, we have limited Haha -ha Yes t-shirts available on the Tesla shop. They are rather expensive at $35 per shirt, but from what I hear, they are high quality. Now, the original reference is somewhat in question, but I do know that it's obviously the order confirmation page, at least right now, for the Model Y. I know this was also a meme at one point, so if any of you guys have any insight as to how this originated, I would love to hear it below. To wrap up today's episode, Mercedes-Benz is throwing in the towel on self-driving in-house, saying, 
we can no longer win. Of course, this comes after Tesla's full self-driving beta and Waymo's driverless ride sharing in Phoenix, to which we get a Mercedes-Benz spokesman saying, quote, we don't compete in any race that we can no longer win. The head of Mercedes-Benz, Ola Kalanius, continued, the conversion to a mobility provider is a thing of the past. We will move away from it again. You can't make money with offers like car sharing. Our investors not only expect sales, but also, above all, profit. So with Mercedes now unburdened of their autonomous driving program, they will of course shift their focus back to things that they have tried to master over the decades. Things like strengthening their brand and emphasizing the luxurious aspects of their vehicles. But what this really means is that they will just wait for Nvidia or Mobileye or another company to have an off the shelf solution and at that time, they will decide to license it rather than developing their own self-driving. Which, in reality, this is the only path forward for any legacy OEM. Them trying to beat Tesla or Mobileye or Waymo is really a waste of money. But that will wrap it up for today's episode of Tesla News. Please like the video if you did, and consider subscribing for more Tesla content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.